Father God, and we look to you, O oh God and Heavenly Father, O oh Jesus, as our main source. And we thank you, Lord God, Father God, for this the new day that you had made. For you said, O oh God and Heavenly Father, to rejoice and to be glad in it. And I pray and I ask of your people this morning, and thank you, Lord God, that you hasten the footsteps of those who didn't reach us yet. And thank you for those who are present. Father God, we will open our mouths. We will sing praises to you. We will just give it all to you this morning withholding nothing. Because it belongs to you, Father God. Lord Jesus, help us, oh God. Give us that strength where we could dance for you this morning, God. Give us, oh God, and Heavenly Father God. You had already given us the authority. You had already given us the power, oh God, and Heavenly Father. Oh God, where we can come against every single thing that is not about you, oh God. Father God, but we lift you up, knowing, oh God, and Heavenly Father, that we walk into your presence this morning, oh God. Holy Spirit, we give you thanks and praise and honor and glorify your holy name as we lift up, oh God, and Heavenly Father, you, oh God, and Heavenly Father, knowing that you, oh God, and Heavenly Father, is our King. You is our provider, oh Father God and Heavenly Father, there is none like you, oh Father God, only you alone are worthy, 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 oh God, Father you are worthy of all our praises, oh God and Heavenly Father, you are worthy of all the honor, of all the glory, oh God and Heavenly Father God, and we thank you Jesus God, as you promised us you wouldn't forsake us or you wouldn't leave us alone, and we thank you Lord for being with us true. God, this morning, oh God, we would open our hearts, oh God, as we come, oh God, and seek you, Lord, and Heavenly Father, first. Seek you first, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And Lord, we pray all these things will be added on to us, oh God. All, oh God, and Heavenly Father, your people prayer will be answered this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, miracles and wonders will be taking place here this morning. But help us, O oh God, to seek ye first the kingdom of God, so that these things will be added on to us, O oh God and Heavenly Father. We will not leave this morning without receiving of your goodness, of your grace, of your mercy, hallelujah, of your word. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, I honor you and glorify your holy name, Father God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we begin our service this morning, Amen. Hallelujah. As we rejoice, Amen. In the Lord, Hallelujah.
continue this morning and as we continue singing amen i want you to greet somebody in jesus name amen tell them you look better than last week tell the person next to you you look better than last week and greet somebody amen, amen. hallelujah there is power
Anybody tired this morning? All right, so as we continue this morning with our worship this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus everything. Body, soul, and spirit as we worship Him. Hallelujah.
Welcome to each and every one of you, those in the sanctuary, as well as those that are viewing online. We are Word of Faith Gospel Tabernacle, Web Street, Williamville, Trinidad, West Indies. And welcome to our service. Amen. For the announcements, we'll be back here again Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. I'm continuing studying of God's Word. Amen. Particular series. Amen. As well as on Friday night, 7 p.m., we continue in God's word. Amen. As we also pray one for another, we pray for our nation. Amen. And uh, as we pray, we know God is able to answer all of our prayers. Amen. Please remember, we are continuing the, our project, our year-end project. With refurbishing the chairs, you notice maybe the chair, your, the seat you are sitting on, it's smiling heartily. And we have already identified uh, the material. Amen. And we're looking forward for your donation, contribution, whatever, whatever amount you're able to afford. So that by, I know surely by Christmas, Everything will be done and looking speak and span, brand new. Amen. The estimated value to refurbish one chair is approximately around fifty dollars. Amen. And you can give maybe towards one, towards two, whatever. God place in your heart, or even a fraction of a chair. Whatever. It's up to you. Amen. We don't force anybody to give anything. And as I said last day, we have, for this year, we have done many, in fact, multiple projects. And God has provided, you all have given towards it. Amen. Anytime we make the appeal, in fact, every beginning of the year, we make an appeal, we identify project. And we'll be sometime, as this year, we were able to go beyond that and do other things. And we thank God for your contribution. Amen, what you are given. And um, you continue to give and God bless you. And you know at the end of the year we, we treat you. So as time comes we will be setting the date for our, our Christmas dinner and so on. Alright, we have to coordinate it because the New Testament church usually coordinate together with us so that we don't clash. So we need to set the date. And for that... We don't ask you for anything. We give you. The church supplies all of those things because you have been faithful in your giving. 
And so far we haven't fallen short on any of the projects. And we thank you so much. And that is our time for the church to give back to you. And not only that, we, we also look at people, special needy cases in the community as well as in the church, and we do all that. Amen? Because, you know, that's the work of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can you turn with me to, this morning, your Bibles, to the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4. And reading just two verses, 9 to 10. And after that we go to First Chronicles chapter 2. And reading verse 55. When you found it, say Amen. First Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. That same book, First Chronicles, chapter 2, verse 55, it says, And the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez, the Tiratite, and the Shematites, and the Shuhatites, these are the Kenites that came of Hamath, the father of the house of Rehab. Rehab. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word which is so rich and so powerful and anointed. Help us to understand your word as we apply it to our lives. Give us divine revelation, divine understanding. And give us divine connection. With your word, that we may take it and apply it to our lives, uh, that we be a blessed people, a victorious people, that even as we pray, you will hear our prayers, our cries, our concern, and you'll answer our prayers. Oh, we thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The title of my message is, Don't let your past dictate your present or your future. Don't let your past dictate your present or your future. This is the story of a young man called Jabez. The scripture doesn't identify who was his mother or who was his father but it clearly states how he got his name because while his mother was in childbirth it would have been a very difficult pregnancy a very difficult experience for her you women would know what I'm talking about some of you may have had very difficult Childbirth experience or even your, your, your entire nine months pregnancy experience. And sometime you, you may wish if you never went through that experience. This was the case. 
of this young man called Jabez. And after that nine months, as the case may be, when his mother gave, gave birth, this was the name that she gave to her son, Jabez, because I bore him with sorrow. That's the name of Jabez. Because I bore him with sorrow. In other words, I had a very painful experience with this child. And could you imagine that this young man going about the village, going about the community, growing up, and that was his name? Because I bore him with sorrow. How many of us have names that people call us and it is not pleasant? Anybody? Well, they call me short man, so they identify and always remind me that I'm short. But, and even as I say that, I'm sure you have a nickname. They, call you, they, they used to call you Ras, right? Because you carried a particular hairstyle. <laughs> but you changed that hairstyle now. You see, names carry certain connotations and meaning with it. And names could stick very easily on people. In fact, was it, you know, even in our community, there are people with very strange nicknames, you know. Just a night or so, two nights ago, my wife, Zapatsi, and I were talking by and we reminding people. Reminding our family of us who was visiting names. In fact, he started to say, but he, boy, they tell him that some people were doing some work and this one named Kiad Bod. <laughs> then we reminded him, it has somebody named Shoes, somebody named Slippers. Part of somebody named is Kuli. Faces. Oh, one name Scratchers. <laughs> I hope nobody had charged me for calling their, their nickname over. But I'm telling you, there are so many names that people give people. In fact, Sister Patsy is famous for putting names on people. She, she put two names and it's still there. One name slips because from young he used to always slip and fall down. Another one was so thin, they call it bones. And people still call them by their name. What name people is great for you? So this name, this name, in fact it was not a nickname, it was his real name, Jabez. Which meant, because I bore him with sorrow. And wherever this young man went, as he grew up, you could imagine... That name stuck on him and he lived a very sorrowful life. Because that is what people was calling him. But you, you are real pain to people, you know. And who knows, because of that name, every single thing that he did caused people sorrow and caused people pain. Because words are very powerful. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And somebody constantly calling you in a particular way. It would send certain vibrations into your body. And you would always be troublesome. Always call people, ha cause people heartaches and pains and sorrow and so on. And I believe from that, that was uh, the lifestyle of the young man. But did he remain so? It pained him to be called like that. And his lifestyle was not a pleasant one. But he did something about it. 
our past may have been terrible. But are you willing to exist in the present like that? Or let that dictate your future? No, 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 no. God is able to make a way for you. You have made possibly many mistakes. And that is alright. We, we are learning constantly every day. But it should be our desire to come out of a life of mistakes. And be more positive in our outlook. And God is always there to help us. Now this is taken from the book of Chronicles. And what is Chronicles? It was chronicled or it was written or it was recorded of the lineage or the family line of certain people of Israel, of Judah. That is what a chronicle is. A record. And in this case, it was a record of people who would have come through and their line that they would have come through in Israel. And that's why when you read it, it might seem a very boring book. In fact, if we look Sometimes these books are so boring to read. If you, in fact, if you see the first, first Chronicles chapter 1, Adam, Seth, Enoch, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, only a set of names. And you'd find out what really going on here. But if you read with understanding, and you read with a bigger vision, you'd realize that they started from the beginning. Adam was the first man. And all those that would have come out of him. But if you read with a better understanding of the Bible and the word of God, you'd see the connection that they were pointing on to somebody. And who were they pointing on to? Jesus. So in this case, in the book of Chronicles... The names that were listed were pointing on to King David. And they would have shown you throughout the history and the lineages as they worked towards how King David came on the scene. Who was his father, his grandfather, his great grandfather going straight back to Adam. And just two verses highlighted one name in chapter 4, verse 9 and 10 that we read. Just two verses highlighted a particular name. In some parts of the scripture, you would hear they talk great things about other people. But about this guy we are talking about, just two verses. And Jabez was more, or Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And the other verse about this young man. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast. That thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. So studying the lineage that led up to David, the king that was after God's own heart, Someone who God selected to be king. And the Bible says it was after God's own heart. This guy name came up. Two verses. Explaining his name. The meaning of his name. But he did something to change that. Because he was not living an interesting life. He was living a very painful life. Because of his name. And he decided to cry out to God. Don't let your past. Dictate. 
your present or your future. So this is what the book of Chronicles is. So next time you read and you see tons of names after names. Try to understand that this is not because it is written there to bore people. But if you read with a better understanding, you would understand there are connections. Why these names were highlighted. So in other words, Jabez was one of those persons who was highlighted in the lineage, in the birth line of a great king. Why was he highlighted? And we see here that definitely he was not satisfied with his life and all the things that surrounded him. There are two types of motivation. There is positive motivation as well as negative motivation. In other words, people could motivate you to do great things and great accomplishments in life. But people could always demotivate you by the things they say. And the aspersion that they cast upon your life, you could remain right there or you could go lower and lower and lower. But the difference is how you take it. The difference is how you take it. And this made the difference in this young man's life. His mere name was very demotivating. But you're always causing pain. Look, everywhere you go, you're creating a problem. Whoever you interact with, boy, it's problem after problem. Boy, just keep away from my ass now. And that is reality, you know. When you look at life and you look at people and, uh, and their lifestyle, sometimes people they want to have nothing to do with them. Everywhere they go, whoever they interact with, is trouble, 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 trouble. And because of the negative connotations and, and all of those things, people go outside there and get worse and worse and worse and remain in that state. Jabez could have chosen to do that, but he decided to change that. So being absolutely fed up with his lifestyle and the name that he was given and everything surrounded him, he decided to go to God. And that is what makes the difference, friend. God is able to change your life. God is able to change your disposition. God is able to change, hallelujah, your present and your future if you trust and depend on him. And many of us could truly say that of ourselves, you know. We were in a road to destruction. Everything about us would have been destructive, troublesome, worrisome. People would have given up on us. But thank God, you realize that time to change. Time that my life take a different trajectory and move in a different direction. Oh Jesus, I need you in my life. Save me, deliver me, and set me free, Lord. I want a different lifestyle. I want a different outcome to my life. And that's why you are here in the house of the Lord. So Jabez, hear what he did, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Just a few words, but very, very powerful. He did not go to any and anybody. The children of Israel were worshipping sometimes all kind of strange gods. And getting themselves preoccupied with all kind of strange things. But this young man, who saw the need for change, 
who saw the need to change his present and his future. He called on the true and the living God. And that is what makes the difference. And many of us in our crises, we call out to Christ to save us, deliver us, and set us free. And he made a difference in our lives. So he cried out to, and it states clearly here, he, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. That it, gr it may not grieve me. So in other words, just those few words, but you realize what was happening. This man was causing grief to others, and he was causing grief to himself. Whatever he did, whatever he said, his life was so, so, so grievous and painful. Whatever he did and whatever he said caused problem, And he certainly didn't like that. So he called on the God of Israel, the true and the living God. And he prayed a little, little prayer. But it was so potent, it was so powerful. He prayed in faith believing. And he said, oh God, bless me now. In other words, if I have to paraphrase this and pray, oh, we pray, oh God bless me now, my life is such a mess. I'm hurting people, I'm doing all kind of crazy things, oh God. It's also because of my name that they put on me, oh Lord, that I can't come out of this. Lord, I need you to turn around my life. I need you to change my situation. I need you to bless me. That my life will not go down the same road that I've been going on. That I'm hurting others and I'm hurting myself. I'm causing pain to others. Oh God, and not only that, I am stuck in this rut. I can't move on with my life. My life is so negative. Nobody wants to have anything to do with me. I cannot move on with my life. I am here just spinning top and more. Oh God, bless me and help me to come out of this and become somebody better. I just paraphrase the kind of prayer that you would have prayed. Bless me indeed and enlarge my coast that thine hand might be upon me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. You see everything he did, an evil outcome was coming that it pained others and pain him that it may not grieve me because he wasn't happy the pain he was causing to others it was very grievous and here what the bible said and god granted him that which he requested god looked at this man and his honesty his sincerity as he cried out to God and God heard his prayers and answered his prayers just like that you know God is able to answer your prayers just like that in a moment in a second God is able to start changing around your situation and many people have experienced that they couldn't do without cigarette when they cry out to God, God take it away. They don't even want to smell that again. Same thing with alcohol. They couldn't do without alcohol. When God touched them, they don't even want to smell that or stay around it. God makes a difference. God is able to make a split, a split second decision and bless you and turn around your life for good. Cut out those ways and habits. God is able to do that. In a split second in your life. Because God is God. Because God is God. So from that then we could go back to verse 9. Why they announce 
Jabez in this chapter as part of the lineage. Only putting up some scriptures, please. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. So from verse 10, then you could go backward and say, and understand why the Bible said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Because of what happened in verse 10, that is why they mention him. He started to stand out in society. He started to stand out in life because God touched him. Because God put his hand upon him and changed his disposition. God changed, hallelujah, his trajectory. That is why he started now to stand out in the community and among his family and among his brethren. So verse 9, which came before, would have been the after effect when God touched Jabez. When God granted him that which he requested. And from that day, when God touched Jabez, when God answered his prayers and intervened in his life, Jabez started to move in a different direction. His life now changed in that he was not causing grief and hurt to others. His life changed that he started to do positive things. That is why the scriptures, the chronicles would have had him, his name chronicled in the history, in the lineage of David. That hear me, there was a man we cannot miss out because he, was, he stood out as being honorable among his family line and among his brethren. He was more honorable than many of them. Do you know the same thing God is able to do for you? For you to stand out in your family. For you to stand out among your siblings. For you to stand out so that people could say, No, but I see something different in that fella. I see something different about that girl. I see something different about that woman. I see something different about that man. And it's all because of God's hand upon your life. It's not because of your education. It's not because you're so smart. It's because God's hand is upon you. That was what made the difference in Jabez. Because the Bible says, And God granted him that which he requested. Is there proof? That this man started to move on in life? And move out of that phase of causing pain and hurt to people. Is there proof? Yes, there is. First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55. Let's see it in the multimedia in the screen. And here where he is spoken about very, very short things there. And the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez, the Tiratites, the Shemaitites, the Shushatites, these are the Kenites that came of him at the father of the house of Rechab. Now, the, even that scripture looks so insignificant. But when you research it, you realize how significant it is. After God put his hand upon this man and changed his trajectory, and God heard his prayers, a, a guy that was only spinning around, going, as you say, spinning top in mud. Reaching nowhere, fed up with life, no positive outcomes. When God touched him, he started to move on in life. Yes. 
And this particular verse picks it up. He started to move on. He started to get closer to God. He started to study the word of God. Because God's hand was upon him. He started to advance in life. Spiritually. Physically. Socially. That he became a scribe. You know what's a scribe? A scribe was a member of a learned class. In Israel throughout the Old Testament and, the New, and even in the New Testament where it's mentioned about. They, they studied the scriptures. And they served as what? Copyists, editors, teachers, and jurists. In other words, those were the law. They didn't have court like you have today. The law had certain rules and regulations that people had to follow. And a scribe was one of those who wrote, wrote down what the word of God said, even from Moses and the, the commandments and all that. Scribes were given that task to scribe. You know scribe carry that to right? Scribe. If they call you a scribe, you are a writer. And the scribes, they copied the scriptures. They edited the scriptures to make sure that it didn't have any strange thing in it. It was original as God would have had it. Because after we do certain things, you have to edit it to make sure it is in line. That's all. They were teachers of the law. And they were jurists. They stood there when people were being tried by their court in those days, according to the Old Testament laws, to make sure that when judgment was done, it was done according to the law. So this man, because God's hand was upon him, as we could say, and nobody, not reaching anywhere in life, because God's hand was upon him, he got a love for the word of God because he saw the hand of God. And started to diligently apply himself to holy scriptures and the things of God. The Torahs and all of that. And he aligned himself with being a scribe. He started to move up in life and in society. As a writer... As an editor, not of the newspapers, about God's word. And he was now teaching other people how this thing should be done. Because remember, God always said to always remind your generation of what God did for his people. So it was written. That is why when certain kings, I think when King Josiah came, when God put him in place, the Bible says he did that which was right in God's sight. He brought, he, he called for the scriptures, all the writings, and he had it read with peop, by people like this. Because after a period of time doing wrong things, he put that one side. But he who wanted to be obedient to God had it read. And the people heard what was written about God and the things of God. And the Bible said, Josiah read his clothes, realizing how people had gone far away from God and the things of God. A king. So these things were written by scribes who were copyists, editors, teachers, jurists. Are you following? You're getting the... the the connection. This man moved up because of the hand of God from one who was reaching nowhere, causing pain and hurt to people, to someone who was now being a blessing to people. And that is where 
verse 55 of chapter 2 comes in. And the families of the scribes dwelt at Jabez. Not only that. A town and a city was named after him. Could you imagine this? When this man applied himself to holy scriptures and writing and all those disciplines as being a scribe, he started to be so outstanding that many people, many of the Jews from near and far used to come to study under him. Are you following me? You know, in today's language, he, come, he became like a professor. That people from near and far would come to study the word of God. Where he would teach them. Where he would teach them how to copy these things. To carry on that discipline of continuing God's word so that it will not be forgotten. A big job. And because of his influence and many people coming over a period of time, people started to live there. Because of what he did. They lived there, they took up residence there. Because they were now learning a, a work, an art that was so necessary to work, to, to give their services to the temple. And to the state. So out of that learning, if the government would have, would have employ them as clerical people to do work of writing and recording. So they would have gotten jobs as clerks and so on and to take care of their family. Because they were scribes. They had the ability, they had the learning to do a perfect work. So an entire town which became a city was named after this man, Jabez, because God intervened. Do you know that many university towns and cities started that same way? My research says in England, the city of Cambridge and Oxford started because of the universities. That were there. And those universities are still there. Oxford University, Cambridge University. People came to study. They rented. Because of their high level of education, they got jobs to teach in the university. And they settled. And the place started to expand because many people from all over the world would have been coming in these places. And it became from a town to a city. There's a place in, in India, just, this is just a few, called Manipal. And that town developed because of the university in that place. Where people would go and learn science and medicine, Manipal. A lot of people from India will go to that city because of the high level of training. M-A-N-I-P-A-L. That they will run. There is a town in California, USA called Berkeley. And that was built because of the university. Berkeley University. They name it Berkeley. So friends, this is how places develop. Well, don't talk about, we had to go too far. You know St. Augustine. What is that place built on? The university. You check all around. People come and build apartments, it is, and those students have to come and rent. And when one batch finishes, another batch comes in. The whole place is built around the university. And what is happening? Higher learning. Some of them end up with jobs in the university and they continue renting or, or buy an apartment or whatever. Some of you right now, when the time comes, you have to look for a place to send your children. To stay in an apartment around the university where they could walk and go to school. We had those experiences.
So St. Augustine, the town of St. Augustine is built around the university. And you see many business related to that. Photocopy shop, bookstore, this, that, the other. Food place. Well, don't talk about food place. The whole town. Rental of apartments and so on. Big investments. So this town was named after Jabez. Where people came to that, if we want to put it, that university where he would have been a professor now. I put it in today's language. And people came and were tremendously blessed because of what was coming out of him now. Higher learning, alignment with God's word, being able to learn how to be a scribe, how to copy God's word in the various language and whatever, how to edit it to make sure it is pure and unadulterated. And how to be jurors. To stand up in the court when they bring somebody before the court. And make sure that the charges are in line with the word of God. So you don't charge anybody wrongfully. Are you following me? Big business. So from a young man who was reaching nowhere. And causing hurt to people. He begged God and asked God, God touch me. God, I need your help. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my coast. That thine hand might be with me. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. We go back to verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He stood out now because of that. They had great honor for him. Because of his advancement in life. And God certainly enlarged his course. He didn't remain where he was born. He went and developed, God allowed him to develop his skills and talents and abilities that he could become, if we use the language, a professor in a university. And they named the town after him. Did not God enlarge his coast? Yes. Yes. That is what God is able to do, friends. We could choose to remain the same way. Or we could choose to let God intervene in our situation and change our entire trajectory in life. The choice is ours. Are we willing to remain the same way? And we have a lot of young people among us. Are you willing? Yes. A lot of negative things. Nickname this the other. Are you willing to remain so? Are you causing a lot of trouble? No, no, no. God is able to change that in your life. As God did for Jabez. Don't let your past dictate your present or your future. God is able to make a difference in your life. You may be sick. You're born with sickness and disease in you. You don't have to remain that way. God is able to heal you. Make you whole and well. They probably call you a slow learner. Who is able to help you? God is able to help you. That you do not have to remain in the same state and condition, friends. Let God intervene in your life. Jabez called unto the true and the living God. And that makes the difference 
calling on the true and the living God. The God of Israel, the God of Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, call his name Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given whereby man must be saved. It is the name of Jesus. Call on Jesus, friends. Call on him with honesty and sincerity. And God is able to change your situation. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. Bless it to our hearts and to our lives. And, and help us to call on the true and living God. As we learn from Jabez. He was fed up. Of reaching nowhere. But when he cried on you, the true and the living God, you intervened. You touched him, you placed your hands upon him. And made him an honorable man. I thank you for doing it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to understand that we do not have to remain the same way. That we could be great men and women. Great boys and girls. And become honorable because of you. I thank you for doing it in Jesus name. Amen. Were you blessed this morning? Amen. Amen. We are going into our communion. This is the first Sunday of October. Let's imagine the year almost to an end. I ask the brother Bob and Hans Rad to come and assist this morning. Read the scripture, First Corinthians chapter 11. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and let us, and many sleep. At this time I ask Brother Bob to pray, and then Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven and hallowed be thy name. Father, we do give praise and thanks unto you and we bless your holy name this day. We thank you, Father, that we could come into your house and have fellowship and communion with you, Almighty God, and one with the other, my God. And we thank you, Father, that we have the privilege and the honor to sup at your table, my God. And Father, I lift this element that represents the body of Christ. And Father, I bless it, I sanctify it, and we receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior name. And I pray as we partake, my God, you'll help us to be worthy partakers this morning. And help us as we partake that we will join our hearts together, that we will join in one accord, in one frame of mind, in singleness of heart this morning, my God. As we partake that it will help to knit us together, bond us together, my God, and do work together for the good and to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to the ends of the earth, my God. I pray this morning, Father, that you will receive all the honor and the glory when we partake this morning, my God. As we recognize and remember our Lord and Savior, how he died on that cross. He gave himself a ransom for us, my God. As we remember, my God, to love one another. As he said that we shall love one another. That it will do show that we are his disciples this morning, my God. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you this morning. For the opportunity we have and the privilege we have been given this morning. 
In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forgive us of every sin, every iniquity. The Father, I repent of my own sin this morning, Mike. Whatever I've done, said, and think to displease you, that you will have mercy and forgive me. And wash me and cleanse me this morning with your precious blood this morning, oh God. And I, my God, I stand in the gap for this congregation also, my God. And this ministry, and whatever we have done as a body to displease you, my God. In our words, in our thoughts, in our deeds, that you will have mercy and forgive us, my God. Wash us and cleanse us this morning. Make us instruments of holiness and righteousness this morning. That we may be able to be worthy partakers this morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray with all thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. O God of Israel, O dear God, I leave this element, O dear God, to be partake on your holy table here this morning, O dear God, which represent your blood and your body, O dear God, Father. Help us to live a meaningful life, O dear God, in this failing world, O dear God, Father. Father, I lift every person under your blood here this morning, O dear God. I pray against any evil spirit, sick spirit, dead spirit upon their life, O dear God, Father. As we partake in holy communion, O dear God, let it bring to our memory what you have done on the cross of Calvary, O dear God. And always live a life that is pleasing to you, O dear God. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will play appropriate music. You can come and take your portion. Go back to your seats. And we will partake together. You can also bring your offering at the same time. Amen.
Let's get ready to partake of Holy Communion. God of my God, we come before you asking to forgive us of our sins, our iniquities, our shortcomings, our failures. Even as we get ready, Lord, to partake that which represents your body and your blood. Cleanse us. Make us pure and clean and true and holy. Make us who you want us to be. That even as we partake, it will bring a blessing to our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's partake together. After the same man also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do he as off as he drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake together. Let's take some time out to thank the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you. For forgiving us and cleansing us with your precious blood. And in my God, even as we have partaken of that which represents your body and your blood, I pray, my God, that with your blood we are washed and made pure and clean for and holy. That there would be spiritual rejuvenation and revival in our lives. You would help us, my God. Let your hands be upon us to enlarge our borders and our boundaries. That will be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. Even as we have partaken that which represents your body, that there be healing mentally, emotionally, physically, in with relations, my God, and relationship. If you bless us and make us who you want us to be, I thank you for doing it, Father. Cleanse us, wash us with your blood. Thank you for hearing our prayers, our cries, our concern this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray for those that are sick, even in our midst. Lord, I pray for your people that you touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Right now, you might have pain. Just you know, if you're able to touch that part of your body, you have pain, touch yourself. With your stripes, they are healed. Even those that are viewing online. Whatever sickness and disease you have, you're able to touch your body, wherever you have that pain, I speak healing. For with your stripes, Jesus, they are healed. And there is no distance in prayer. Touch your people. Touch them in a mighty way. Draw us closer to you by your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Oh, bring back the backsliders. Bring the sinners to repentance. Set the captive free. Touch your people in a mighty, powerful way. Father, we give you all the praise, all the thanks, all the honor, all the glory for doing it, Father. I command that righteous gone. I command heart condition gone. Eye condition gone. Skin condition gone in Jesus' name. Touch your people, Father, my God. Oh, Lord. Trust by your Holy Spirit. I thank you for miracles, miracle touch. I thank you for doing it, Father. Breakthroughs in a mighty way. Thank you for doing it, Father. Bless your people, bless your people. Touch us, even as they crowd to you, my God. Even as we crowd to you, touch us. Enlarge our borders, oh God. Enlarge our borders. Take us places, my God, where we could be a blessing. Let our life be a blessing to somebody, Father, my God. Help us to be more honorable than those around us, Father, my God. Even as you did it for Jabez, and you turned his trajectory in life, you turned around his situation and you made him more honorable than his brethren, oh God. 
you lifted him up financially you lifted him up my God socially you lifted him up my God my God that he could be a blessing to many that we could have read about him today in the scriptures do the same for us it's our desire to live for you we thank you for doing it in Jesus name Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a big clap this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We bless your holy name. For you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. If you didn't have time to give your offering, you can give it up now. Hallelujah. Put it your time. Don't forget, sow something towards the, the chair renovation. Amen.